Hello. Hello. <laughs> um, here we are. <laughs> back, back to the Vijnana Bhairava Tantra. Vijnana Bhairava Tantra, verse 95. Now, it's been a while since we had a VBT video, and um, some of you have been around long enough to know that when there's a break like that, it's almost always because the next verse has um, challenges of interpretation that need more time to to delve into um, in order to be able to, you know, make a, a proper video on it. And this verse, verse 95, I think it's Yukti 71, um, which is in the contemplative section of the text, contemplative practices. It's 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 a difficult verse, and it well, there's basically two quite different interpretations, and it's um these have not been teased out in the existing translations. Uh, that people just go with one or the other, or kind of conflate them. Um, but I, I want to tease that out because again, the whole purpose of of this uh, of my teaching on this text is to bring greater clarity and detail than has ever been brought to the text in the English language. So let's look at the verse. I'm gonna paste it into the chat window here. For those watching live, it's below the video if you're watching on YouTube. Okay, I'll just recite the verse first. That's always a good place to start. <laughs> Maya vimohini nama kalaya kalanam stitam ityadi dharmam tatvanam kalayana pritag bhavet. Okay, we could translate it um, Maya which in the tantric tradition is defined as the power of self-concealment in plurality. Maya Shakti is the power of consciousness to conceal itself in apparent plurality. Maya is indeed bewildering. Or you could take this first phrase as Maya is, um, is called the bewildering one. Maya Vimohini Nama. Now, it, it, its function, it is, it is a function of the tatwa of kala, right? So this verse gets a little bit technical if you don't know the terminology. So um, there's maya, you know, in the tatwa hierarchy is immediately above the five kanchikas. Um, this could possibly be the name for a great um band of course it would have to be like an intense punk or metal band probably maya and the five kanchikas <laughs> um because these are you know the the limitations on the experience that consciousness has of itself that are that cause suffering when they are not properly understood but they don't if they are, right? So the, the limitations are not inherently cause, causing of suffering. They um, cause suffering only in the context of ignorance, okay? So when we have a, a awakening, awareness, knowledge, discernment, insight, then the same limitations no longer cause suffering. So let's, let's be clear about that. Um, okay, so... The first of the five kanchikas is kala, and that means a kind of um, limited power to act, right? We could interpret this in many ways, uh, and one possible way, in fact, is the argument that there's no such thing as free will prior to uh, authentic spiritual awakening, right? And by authentic, I mean an actual spiritual awakening that, that um, begins the process of freeing you from your cultural conditioning rather than the apparent awakening, which is really just um, 
shifting to different conditioning, <laughs> really just uh, deciding this conditioning is this narrative is truer than that other narrative. Um, so in, in a real spiritual awakening, you start to, 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 to see the contingency of all narratives, you know, a conting, contingent on culture that is and society. And so, um, that's part of it. That's not all of awakening, but my, the point is that prior to this, what I'm calling authentic spiritual awakening, there cannot be, um, actual free will. There can only be the acting out of one's conditioning right now of course this is just a broad oversimplification because you can have moments glimmers of awakening prior to the actual beginning of the process and in those moments you do have glimmerings of 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 uh, true free will <laughs> um which is the power we might say is the power to determine your own inner state uh, independent of the circumstances in which you find yourself. These definitions are inadequate, but it's, but it's, it's okay to be getting on with. Um, okay. So, so limited power of action, you know, kala in a very ordinary sense means, you know, yeah, you're in this embodied form of consciousness. You can't, you know, just fly through the air, um, at least in the waking state of what we, called consensus reality and you know that's a limitation but more importantly is this notion of, of limitation that that you can't that until until awakening really begins you can't break outside of your own conditioning in any meaningful way and and and, and action can't really come from any place other than conditioning okay so kala is just the first of the five kanchikas then we have you know um limitations on our powers of knowledge and, and cognition um again these don't don't apply in the same way um uh, later on in the in the awakening process um you know and and other kanchikas uh, uh, veils on your experience which you can read about in tantra illuminated if you haven't already i'm not going to go through all of those um because it's a lot of detail and also because the text only mentions uh, Kala specifically, which again is this limited power of action. Okay. So, so Maya, this, this bewildering power of consciousness to conceal itself within apparent plurality is very much a function of, or it functions as these five Kanchikas, but especially this limited power of, of, of action which we, we might characterize and, you know, again, in this, in this sense of, um, acting, acting uh, wholly on the basis of, of our conditioning. Um, as opposed to what some of you are thinking, well, <laughs> you know, what can we call it? Divine inspiration. That's, you know, a placeholder term for something that's really beyond uh, conceptualization or description. But yes, action can flow forth from what we might call divine inspiration, um, chit pratibha, uh, can, you know, this divine inspiration uh, or intuition, but that's a problematic term, can flow forth into will, knowing and acting all um, wordlessly and free of conditioning. Uh, and, and that's, of course, a function of awakeness to a to, 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 to greater or lesser extent. Okay, now this gets even a little bit more complicated, I'm afraid, um, but we'll, we'll sort it out. <laughs> okay, so then we have um, ityadi dharmam tatvanam kalayan. Now, kalayan can mean um, knowing or, 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 or reflecting or discerning, okay? And that's how the commentator Shivopadhyaya takes it. He glosses kalayan with vimarshan. Um, so I'm, I'm not pulling this out of my hat. It, it, because the word kalayan is a weird word to use here, but we'll come to why he uses it, the author. Okay, so uh, <laughs> what is this saying? Well... There's two readings here, two totally different readings. We could go with um, discerning the Adi Dharma. 
Now, not a lot of people know the word dharma can mean quality or property, as well as all these other meanings that you are probably aware of. So, discerning the adi dharma, the primordial property or, or quality of all the tattvas, tattvanam. Now, in that context, it's because it's a present participle, in that context, if one is doing that, if one is actively discerning the primordial uh, property of all the tattvas or principles of reality, napratag bhavet, one does not experience separation. One becomes not separate, not individual. One is no longer a separate individual insofar as one is successfully um, discerning the primordial property of all the principles of reality. Well, what would that be? Consciousness. That all principles of reality are simply a mode of conscious experience, are, are simply a vibration of consciousness, are simply an aspect of consciousness, are simply an appearance within consciousness, whatever of those phrases you want to use. Um, again, uh, using awareness or consciousness interchangeably here. So if we read it this way, uh, that the meaning is discerning the primordial property of all the tattvas, that means discerning that all principles of reality are nothing but a manifestation of, of the one consciousness that you are. That everything's a manifestation of, of what you are in a, in, a, in a different mode. So if you realize that, you're not going to experience separation because there's only consciousness and that's what you are. Everything is what you are appearing in another form. No separation. Okay? Napratag bhavet. Now, um, the second reading which certainly some translators have gone with. I'm not, as, I'm not as happy with this reading, even though it grammatically perhaps makes a bit more sense. And that reading is ityadi dharmam, meaning um, where the iti and the adi go together, <laughs> where if, if one is discerning the property of all the principles of reality in this way, if one is discerning the individual property of each of the principles of reality, okay, where ityadi means and actually and so on, you know, this is by the way, the weirdness of the Sanskrit language. The very same word adi can mean something very profound, primordial, and it can also mean etc. <laughs> which you know, these are obviously very different, um, and yet it's the same word. So that's, again, Sanskrit is just um, a, a uniquely multivalent language. Okay, so sorry if this video is tough going, um, but what to do, that's the verse. That's the verse that we have, so um, we, we got to do our best with it. Okay, so I'm not as satisfied with that reading. Uh, hopefully you've guessed why. Because if the practice here is discerning the unique property that, that characterizes each of the principles of reality, that is an analytical process that doesn't culminate in any lack of separation. Why would one become no longer separate, pratak, through this analytical process? That doesn't make sense to me. So I think, um, I, I don't think that's, that reading is, is, is correct, even though the reading I want <laughs> that does make more sense is grammatically um, maybe slightly harder to justify. But that shouldn't uh, impede us because in these tantras, we absolutely see time and again that grammatical rigor is sacrificed. Um, for the sake of, you know, a, 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 a deeper meaning. And that's even commented on by the ancient uh, commentators themselves. Okay. Um, okay, last thing about this uh, verse. And this, this is, it gets even another deeper layer of meaning, okay? Um, it's a very uh, nuanced verse. Now we get all these words with the, the, the verbal root kal with the with the root 
kal as as the root of the word. We get kala, we get kalana, and we get kalayan here. So this is um, not a coincidence. Indeed, all of these roots have something in common. They also are cognate with the name of the goddess Kali. So, you know, this is not something that could, could really be a coincidence here, that we have these three Kal words, you know. And so what I think is, is going on is that the author is um, subtly suggesting uh, something to us that this, um, you know, f for this author anyway, the divine play of concealment and revelation of, of limitation and, and going beyond limitation by realizing the primordial property of all, of all things and beings uh, is the play of, of goddess Kali. And it's an intense play. It's a terrifying play at times. Um, it's not, it's, you know, <laughs> but it's also, um, you know, her, her, an expression of her uh, power that she, she wants to um, manifest this world of apparent plurality, duality, and, um, and then reveal herself within it once again. Uh, so, this, of course, is a very sort of deep and, 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 and subtle doctrine, very, very hard to kind of break this down in a short amount of time, indeed impossible. But I would suggest that for the author, Maya is equivalent to Kali, that there's a subtle suggestion here with all these Kul words, which again are cognate with the name Kali, that, um, that, that, that he understands and venerates Maya as Kali, that a way to go beyond the problematic experience of maya maya as samsara is indeed to venerate um or worship maya as the as the goddess and and yes she sometimes appears in a terrifying aspect hence kali not not some other goddess is appropriate here um and and overcoming the the bewilderment uh, you know apparently caused by maya but really by our misunderstanding of maya is challenging and best expressed by this fierce goddess Kali. So um, hear the verse once again, hear those Kal words, feel that subtle, subtle implication if you can. We'll just finish by um, chanting it and then I'll see if there's there's questions. I know it's um, a, a difficult verse to, to ask questions about, but maybe you have some. Maya vimohini nama kalaya kalanam stitam ityadi dharmam tatvanam kalayan napratag bhavet. Om. I don't see questions in the in the chat window here, but that's also because this new uh, code that Facebook is using it is not working very well for for live um, question or chat feed coming through as of yet. That's okay. Anyway, um, so that's the verse. The next one is considerably easier, so there shouldn't be a a, 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 a gap, um, you know, because again, it's it's not so much the Sanskrit; it's the, the researching what different commentators have to say and so on um, that can cause this delay. Um, basically, I, I got to do my homework before I feel in integrity uh, giving a commentary on the verse. Now, yeah, see you, see you soon, ish. <laughs> Hopefully, get back to a couple times a week with VBT verses. Nice to be with you all, and uh, if you are having a challenging time, please watch the new video 
you are not at the mercy of your emotions. Super important. Please watch it. It's here in the group and on YouTube. Oh. Oh, and lastly, postscript. Uh, I haven't done this in a while. Really want to thank the patrons on Patreon who who are the, their support is just stronger than ever. Thank you, patrons. Without you, um, well, I wouldn't really even have a roof over my head, probably, but I wouldn't be able to, to share so much with, with so many and do so many free offerings. That's all because of the patrons on Patreon. So thank you.